Hey, good morning. I'm Andy Lee. Come on in. Come sit around the table. Come to my kitchen here in Wilmington, North Carolina. It's a gorgeous day. I love April. Can you believe that it's almost May? It's going to be here before we know it. Come on in. I see I've got a couple of people. I haven't seen your names yet, so I'm I'm watching. Oh, there we go. Hey, Miss Stacy. Good to see you this morning. And Mary. Good morning. Y'all come on in. Do you have your coffee? I have my coffee and one of my favorite Polish pottery mugs. Dina, good morning. Um, I'm excited. Dina um, just finished um, a Mary Like Me with a group of ladies in New York. And that's awesome. And before I forget it, hey, good morning, Leah. So I'm not going to be here tomorrow morning. Because um, there's a group in Raleigh um, that have been that are going through a Mary like me, and I'm gonna FaceTime them about this time tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna miss you tomorrow. Hey Penny, good to see you. Thank you for joining, guys. I'm gonna pray us up, and then I'm actually gonna start today with Jesus calling. Gonna go backwards, and then we're gonna get into the bite. Hey Miss Deb, good to see you, and Selena, good morning. Hearts, hearts to you too, Nina. Okay. Hold my hand. Leah, I'm glad you got to um, come be with us this morning. Heather, good morning. Good to see you. Marie Brown. Oh, I just love y'all. Shelly Murphy, good to see you this morning. We missed you yesterday. So hold my hand, guys. I'm praying this up. Father, we just love you. Everybody say, Lord, we just love you. We say hallelujah. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for waking us up today. Thank you for a new day. Thank you, Lord, for this word, this promise. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for what Jesus has done and how we can look forward to redeemed bodies. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray these words will go down deeper, that we'll understand it better, that you'll open our minds. I pray for anyone who is um, suffering through depression, anyone who is just struggling through life right now, that that be lifted in Jesus' name, that something be spoken today to um, just bring a breakthrough, a healing, a, a new chapter, a new breath of life for those who are struggling physically, for those who are sick with, with cancer, those who are going through those treatments. We pray for healing in Jesus' name. But God, we also pray for strength and grace and energy and hope and for their caregivers that you give them the strength and grace and energy and hope they need by your spirit. We love you, Lord. I know there's a lot going on with everyone um, watching today. And I just pray you touch of your spirit on them, even as I speak in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So many of you guys have just been on my heart. Um, and uh, God is good. I'm so thankful for prayer, aren't you? That we can that we can give Him our hearts' desires. We can give Him our struggles. Hey, Hannah. Good morning. I'm glad you're here with us. Hey, you know what, guys? I'm starting this morning. Hey, Lee. Thank you. I'm starting this morning with Jesus calling. You know, I often end with it, but I looked at it a while ago, and I thought, oh gosh. I need to start this. So here we go. April 20th. In two days, my middle son will be 24, which is just so weird. Anyway, okay. So April 20th. Do not be afraid. This is Jesus calling, talking. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Hear me saying, peace. Be still to your restless heart. Anybody got a restless heart this morning? No matter what happens, I will never leave you or forsake you. Let this assurance soak into your mind and heart until you overflow with the joy. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, you need not fear. The media relentlessly proclaim bad news. Oh my gosh, it's all over the news, isn't it? For breakfast, lunch, and, di and dinner, you can always hear about something bad happening, even on Facebook. A steady diet of their fare will sicken you. Instead of focusing on fickle, ever-changing news broadcasts, 
tune in to the living word. Amen. That's what we're doing this morning. Tune in to the living word, the one who is always the same. Let scripture saturate your mind and heart, and you will walk steadily along the path of life. Even though you don't know what will happen tomorrow, you can be absolutely sure of the ultimate destination. Amen. Can I get it? Amen. Hallelujah. I hold you by your right hand, and afterward, I will take you into glory. Oh, amen. I just felt like we needed to start with that today. I know, I mean, life is a battle, right? I mean, even if everything is awesome and great, there's this battlefield going on in our mind, <laughs> for me, a lot, all the time. And then there's the, there's the battlefield of what's going on in the world and that fear that, that can just um, consume us. But today, we're going to start with the Word of God. That's the best way to start the day right and let it saturate our mind we're going to be talking about having eternal perspective today so we are in our bite of bread this morning is ephesians 4 30 ephesians 4 30 this whole week we're focused on being redeemed we're focused on that word of redemption and being redeemed what jesus did we just celebrated Easter. We just celebrated what he did for us in the resurrection. His redeemed body, and he, uh, he, you know, is the firstborn of creation, and we will follow with redeemed bodies too. And that's what we're looking at today. So go with me to Ephesians four thirty. Yeah, battlefield of the minds. Oh man. So we really need these scriptures as we fight this battle that goes in our heads all the time so ephesians 4 30 paul writes to the people of ephesus and do not grieve the holy spirit of god with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption that's it that's our bite i'm going to read it again and do not grieve the holy spirit of god with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. That's it. Oh, let's talk about grieving the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, man, I don't want to ever grieve the Lord. So, as I looked up, looked at the um, some of the commentaries on this, one that I read, the Alicott's commentary, said, you know, there's Different um, scriptures talk about affecting the Holy Spirit. Priscilla, good morning. Kathy Huntley, good morning. So, um, 1 Thessalonians 5.19 talks about quenching the Holy Spirit. Acts 7.51 talks about resisting the Holy Spirit. But now Ephesians 4.30 talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. And this is what the commentary said. Um... Uh, grieving the Holy Spirit implies personal relation to a divine person. So you can quench them, you can resist them, but grieving him, grieving him implies personal relation, personal relation to a divine person capable of being grieved by our transgressions partly as our um Partly as sins against his perfect holiness, listen to this, partly as sins against his perfect holiness, partly as suicidal rejections of his unfailing love. And when I read that, I thought, oh my gosh, that is, that is so true. That's how we grieve this spirit is by not fully accepting his love for us and all that that accompanies and what that means for us and and to us um, and it made me think of a really popular song that's out now on the radio called live like you're loved by hawk nelson anybody know it anybody know that song if you don't know that song even if you do know that song just google it this morning and listen to it and sing it out loud. Live like you're loved. Walk like you're free. 
Stand like you know who he made you to be. Amen. When we start walking in that, because the enemy wants to keep us squashed. The enemy wants us to believe that God's mad at us. The enemy wants us to believe that we just can't be good enough. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to live up to his standards. That's where the enemy wants us. But, but if, if we live with this perspective, that we are in love, that we have been called, that we have been chosen. If you are watching this today, I believe you've been chosen. You've been called. You, you, there's something in you drawing you closer, wanting to know more about the Lord, wanting to hear his word, hungry for it. And so you start your day like this. You start your day filling up with his word. So we don't want to grieve. Have you, have you, um, has somebody ever grieved you? What was that? What caused that grief? Erica, good morning. Good to see you. What caused that grief? And, and it was probably, you know, that they didn't, I know in my, in my life, when someone has grieved me, it's because they had, they just, that one thing is, didn't have not been able to, to get that I've loved them or not understood what I was doing, doing or trying to help them or whatever. So think about that. Think about the times that other people have caused you to grieve, and I'm not just talking about death. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, when it just hurts your spirit, you know, that that somebody has, has um, offended you or done something and just grieved you. It's grieved you. Well, we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, and we can do that by not accepting his love for us, by by not accepting his place in our lives, and so what do we what do we do with this? Let's look um let's talk about as we continue to look at the scripture, we do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You were sealed for the day of redemption. Let's talk about that day of redemption. Let's talk about that for a minute. Can I just somebody say glory? Because that is what that day of redemption is about. It's about glory. The day of redemption is when Jesus is going to come back. We're all going to, our bodies are going to go up into heaven and they're going to be changed. Our bodies are going to be redeemed. So right now, because of what Christ has done, because of the Spirit, our souls have been redeemed, our spirits have been redeemed, but our bodies have not been redeemed yet. So I'm just telling you, this whole week I've just been really frustrated with my body. You know, like I'm not, I'm not sick, I'm not fighting illness, and many of you are. And so you really know, gosh, you can't wait for your body to be redeemed, for this disease and, and all that you're fighting to be gone in Jesus' name, for that final reality of our bodies to be restored and redeemed and shining. When Jesus came back, when Jesus was resurrected, do you remember in the tomb in the garden when Mary saw him and she didn't recognize him? I thought it was strange she didn't even recognize his voice until he said, Mary. He said her name, and then oh, she knew Rapponi, and she fell at his feet. And she, she started kissing his feet and holding on to his ankles, and she didn't ever want to let go. When they saw him in the road at Emmaus, that the disciples were walking along the road, and Jesus shows up, and he starts talking to them, and they didn't recognize him at first. But they said to each other, something in us, didn't you feel your heart just burn inside of you as he talked? There was something about this man, but that he didn't look the same. So just don't you really wonder what he looked like and how he changed, how his body had been redeemed, that his body had changed in ours will too, that will be perfect and whole and awesome and wonderful redeemed bodies. Um, when the day of redemption comes. So our souls have been redeemed, our spirits have been redeemed, but our bodies have not been redeemed just yet. Only when the day of redemption comes. Hebrews 9.12 talks about our souls being redeemed, that Christ was that final sacrifice to go into the holy holies with his own blood. He shed his own blood so that we can now enter the holy of holies. So the proof of the Spirit is presence, His presence. And 
his operations uh, produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So, okay, let's talk about that. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read my notes and they're not making any sense. Do you ever do that? Maybe it's because I wrote them at 5 o'clock this morning. Can't read my writing. So let's go back to the scripture. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed with the day of redemption. That word sealed, it's that really cool Greek word that means it's this payment. It's a payment ahead of time, a deposit. It's a promise of what's to come. So how many of you have you experienced the Holy Spirit in you? What has the Holy Spirit done in you? Has it changed you in any way? Has it helped you? So if y'all can just type up for me as I'm talking, type up some um, answers to what you know if you've experienced the holy spirit if you've got and i believe all of y'all have the holy spirit in you if you're watching this you want you've probably proclaimed jesus and you have the holy spirit in you how has the holy spirit affected your life what what are the changes have you um experienced with the holy spirit we know the fruits of the holy spirit our love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness. Hey, Beth, Rick, good to see you. Gentleness, faithfulness. Evelyn says that still small voice comforts and guides. And yes, Jesus said the comforter is coming. He is the counselor is coming. So many things give an inner peace. That peace the Holy Spirit gives us. That peace, my friends. This is tangible for you. This is tangible for me. Whether or not we can really hold on to it or see it, we have experienced it and we feel it. That still small knowing that we have this deposit inside of us of guaranteeing what is to come, the redemption of our bodies. Hallelujah. Amen. To pray for, to live with this eternal perspective. I, I was really... I have to say, I was really wise when I was 20-ish in my 20s because I knew I had to start praying. I had to pray for this eternal perspective. And it really wasn't my wisdom. I know the Lord gave that to me and the Holy Spirit gave that to me to pray for this eternal perspective and everything I did. And I have to tell you, you know, life just keeps on going and you do your life and you get older and the, those things you learned at a young age, you kind of, they just kind of, you know, well, you go on with life. And then they come back around to you. And so I'm back there again. I'm like, oh, Lord, help me remember to pray this today for this eternal, this eternal perspective. You've been helping people in need of peace. That's awesome, Hannah. That's great. So let's look at this context. Let's look at the context of this scripture that we're focused on today. In the context, if you look at Ephesians 4, if you look at the title, at least in, in my Bible, there's a title here, Living as Children of Light. So that's the context of the scripture about not grieving the Holy Spirit. And let me just read it again. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So the title is, living as children of light. And so he says in verse 17, I'm going all the way up to 17 to get to the context. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles. Oop, though we're Gentiles, right? Hey, Diane, good to see you. Many of us are. Um, so I tell you and insist on it. That you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. Oh, can I just stop right there? How many of y'all, how many of us uh, get stuck in our heads trying to figure things out? Trying to make it all work. The futility of our thinking. Well, don't live that way. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulging in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. Just this selfish desire for more, trying to fill up that hole and fill up that hole. And he says, don't live that way. Go to verse 23. 
to be made new in the, well let's go to 22 you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds. Oh, it just keeps on coming back, right? <laughs> this whole teaching today about how we're thinking and how that affects how we live is how we think. So he's saying to be made new in the attitude of our minds. What's, your, what's the attitude of your mind today? <laughs> Uh, if, it, if you're struggling with the attitude of your mind, ask the Lord to help you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me eternal perspective. Give me some of your joy today. Give me some of your peace today. Give me a scripture that I could chew on today. Um, be made in the attitude of your minds and to, be, and to put on the new self, created to be in God, to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Did you know we are created to be... These eternal, holy beings. That was the plan from the very beginning. So then he goes on and he says to put off speaking falsehood and to be truthful to your neighbor, to be kind to your neighbor. Do not let the sun go down while you're angry. Um, do not give the devil a foothold. Oh, our anger can do that, right? Not that it's wrong to be angry, but it's what we do with that anger and how we handle that anger. He who, is, um, he who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands that he may have something to share with those in need. Just, so I love the um, just the really common sense teaching that we have here work with your hands not that any of us are stealing but um the, the the beauty of working with your hands so that you can help other people and this is what we're getting to do not let any unwholesome and that word unwholesome means rotten don't let any rotten thing come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up. How can we do that, my friends? We can only do this with the Holy Spirit because our our um, selves just you know just come out with these uh, things that we don't want to say, and we're all going to do it. We're going to have to pray for God to redeem it. But that may, maybe before we talk, that we count to three, or we say the fruits of the Spirit, or whatever we we need to, because you know the very last one is self control. But that what's coming out of our mouth would be beneficial to those around us. So, and that brings us to um, our, our verse. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed with the day of redemption. How do we grieve him? We grieve him by not accepting his love for us. We grieve him by not having this eternal perspective. We grieve him by not taking, saying yes. This is what Jesus has done, and I'm going to live. I'm a, ch a child of light, and I have light and love to give to all those around me and to live with that perspective. What if you just lived with that perspective, that I've got the Holy Spirit in me and Jesus in me, and that's all I have to give? It's not about my talent. It's not about my beauty. It's not about how smart I am. It's about the Jesus in me and how I give that to those. Even when I go to the gym, just to be kind and loving and shine in that light of peace and hope and truth in us. Oh my gosh, how different would the world be if we did that? To being kind and tenderhearted. Yes, to be that way and to live that way. Verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, forgave you. And that word forgave, the tense there is, it's instantaneous. It's happened, it's been done, it's present, and it's true. He's not going, oh, should I forgive her or not? It just depends how she acts today. No. What Jesus did was done. It's completed. He died for us, and we are forgiven 
that's ours to accept it, to put that on, to live that way and let that affect everything we do of how we relate to all the people around us, um, kind and compassionate and loving and forgiving only by the hope and the help of the Holy Spirit and eternal perspective. So all of this is really good stuff. So how do we do this? Yes, the world would be such a different place if everyone found their inner Holy Spirit in them. Absolutely, to tune into that. So how do we do this? Well, how first we gotta fill up with Him. We can't do this if we're just trying to do it all on our own. You've gotta spend, we've gotta spend time with him yes time and fellowship with one another is really great and really helpful and we need that but i hope you're finding some time every day to be in the word to be journaling to be with him to be worshiping get outside get outside even if it's hard for you to do it get uh, if you can walk a block walk a block if you can't to sit out in the fresh air get outside if you can go to the beach go to the beach if you what Go get in some trees. Go outside. Get into his creation. Pray for eternal vision. That is such an important prayer to pray. It can change your life. Pray for eternal perspective and eternal vision on things. Speak kind words. Help others. Live for eternity. And my friends, live like you're loved. Live like you're loved. Let me pray you up. I know you have a lot to do today. Father, we just praise you and love you. We say hallelujah. We say glory. Oh, we can't wait for that glory to see these bodies redeemed and restored eternally for you, with you forever and ever. Holy Spirit, fill us up a little bit more today. Give us your peace, your grace, your kindness, your forgiveness, Lord. Help us. Um, be conduits of that, to give it to those around us too, that they would say, I want what you've got, that peace and that joy. And Lord, I know, I know that we're not going to do this perfectly 24-7. So we just pray for your grace. You pray that you help us in our minds to think with that eternal perspective um, and to, to just change the way we're thinking, knowing that you love us and you love the people around us. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. We never want to grieve you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm so excited that you guys joined me today. I pray that encouraged you and bless you. It encouraged me just teaching it. So I hope that you got something out of it too. I will not be here tomorrow morning. Like I said, I'm going to be sharing with the Mary group um, in Raleigh tomorrow morning. So I'm so excited that you were here. Go to wordsbyindylee.com. You can get the reading list for the rest of the week. Um, and I just lost it. I had it. But anyway, so go to wordsbyindylee.com. You can see that reading list. You can subscribe to get the reading list every week. Plus, I post on Wednesday and Friday, too, just some encouraging, um, sometimes digging in the Word, where Wednesdays digs into the Word, finds a Greek or a Hebrew word in Scripture, and Friday is usually all about faith and purpose and, and just encouragement. So, anyway, wordsbyanyleigh.com. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. You have a great day. Have a great weekend. Go out there and be a threat to the enemy. Live like you are loved. Bye.